Brandon in Dallas asks a very controversial question. Some say that certain charismatics are engaging in New Age practices. Others say you can't judge even if something is weird. Help me to discern about this. Brandon, that's tough because it's hard to keep the balance between discernment and becoming overly judgmental. So let me just throw some things out that I think will be of help to you. First of all, there's a danger in being what's called a heresy hunter, on a witch hunt, always looking to find something wrong with someone somewhere. And usually it comes back to a theological prejudice and the individual is foundationally basing their witch hunt on a particular theological viewpoint. And if it doesn't fit into that, well, it's of the devil, or it's heresy, or it's demonic. Well, that's wrong. On the other hand, there is an equal danger of just accepting everything, of not wanting to quench the spirit, or not wanting to be judgmental about odd things that the Holy Spirit may be doing. Now, I understand in the Old Testament some pretty strange things took place from time to time. Whether it was a prophet marrying a prostitute, or whether calling forth a bear to eat some children because they cursed the man of God. Yes, there are some strange things in the Bible. But we live under grace. We live in the time of the full revelation of Christ. And we not only have the Old Testament to guide us, but we have the New as well, and we have the Holy Spirit. So we should be more discerning and more adept at figuring out what is and is not of God. The challenge is theology gets in the way. People's prejudices and their cultural instincts get in the way. I do believe there is a danger in not being discerning enough about things that are unnecessarily strange. And I'll be honest with you. I have been present in meetings where I saw things taking place which I, as an exorcist, know were demonic, but were being heralded as a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. It's just ignorance. I don't think these people mean badly by that viewpoint. They just don't know. In fact, a lot of those people who are into that sort of, well, whatever happens, it's of God kind of thing, don't do deliverance. They don't understand deliverance. They don't see how Satan can work in those realms. I've got a little saying. If it's odd, it's not God. <laughs> and what do I mean by that? I mean, if it's really odd, really out there, there's a good chance it's simply not of the Lord. Now, Are there some strange things that take place? Well, even in deliverance. Yes, there are some strange things. And when I talk about things like dissociated soul transference of someone else projecting their soul into the mind of another individual or ancestral generational dissociation where an inherited memory fragment from the past becomes genetically encoded to the extent that you can speak with it as an individual. Some people would say, well, that's strange. But is there neurological evidence for it? Is there psychological evidence for it? In other words, is there a a logical scientific matrix you can put this into apart from the spiritual conclusions that can be drawn from it? So if you're in a meeting where odd things are happening, where strange things are happening, I encourage you not to be judgmental. I encourage you not to charge forward and stop it in the name of the Lord because it's not of God. That's just simply not your place. But at the same time, a little bit of healthy skepticism is good. Not cynicism, but spiritual discernment. You know, Jesus promised us in John 16 that the spirit of truth would come. That he would guide us into truth. Now, if we believe that, then we've got to trust the Holy Spirit to guide us to that truth. And something else I believe is very important. Accountability. Oftentimes, some of these strange charismatic groups are led by lone wolves. 
They're not part of any group and they're not accountable to anybody and they go off and do their thing and there's no one to say, you know, brother, you know, sister, maybe we need to take another look at that. Throughout the years as I've developed various paradigms for dealing with deliverance, sometimes the Lord would give me a revelation, but I would keep it to myself. Sometimes for years and watch and observe and see what happens as I actually minister deliverance. For example, things like dissociated soul transfer, it's an ancestral generational dissociation, which are taught in detail in our International School of Exorcism. These are things that germinated in my heart and my spirit a long time before I developed the matrix of an explanation and came forward to present it in a logical fashion that could be accepted by reasonable people. I let it germinate in my soul. And then I went to other mature brothers and sisters in the Lord and shared it with them and, and asked them what their experience was and sought some basis of commonality of what people who were not with me but at different times in their own setting experiencing the same thing I was. And through this consensus of seeking the Lord and seeking the wisdom of other brothers and sisters in the Lord, then we have developed some of these teachings and concepts. Unfortunately, some people who are into what might be called New Age, even Eastern mystical Kundalini experiences, are not submitting themselves to people outside of their own circle to have an objective viewpoint. If it is of God, it will stand the test of true criticism. If it's truly of the Lord, it can hold up to scrutiny and analysis and doesn't have to be protected as some kind of sacred cow that nobody touches or goes near lest we offend the Lord and lest we quench the Spirit. Let's be reasonable here. I wish that the charismatic and the non-charismatic camps could get together and talk about these things one with another to reach a consensus of spiritual reality that whether we agree on everything, we could all conclude God is doing something. So strange things have happened in church history. They will happen again but let's be cautious about what we say is of God or what we say is not of God. The most frequent demon that I deal with is the spirit of Jezebel, the most prevalent evil spirit of our age. This demon wants to destroy your health, your finances, your marriage, your family, and your church. Learn the tactics of Jezebel throughout history and in the time in which we live. My book, Jezebel, Defeating Your Number One Spiritual Enemy, is your key to overcoming this demon, which is more prevalent than at any time in human history. Get your copy today, Jezebel. Defeating your number one spiritual enemy. He took the curses away from me. Was he Bob Larson? Because he can help you. If your life isn't all that it should be, if relationships aren't working, if your health, your finances, or your spiritual life are unhappy, schedule a personal one on one encounter with me. We'll get to the root of the issues that are holding you back. We'll give you answers in a whole new direction in life. Oh, what a change, what a difference when you have an encounter with God. Take action. I look forward to seeing you soon. your support for this worldwide outreach to do what Jesus did. For the latest information on resources, seminars, conferences, training institutes, retreats, and international missions, go to boblarson.org. Thank you for your prayers and financial partnership.